Since all levels start with an idea, we'll begin with the theme. Pick a theme, research it a little bit if you want, then come up with a game plan to determine the direction your level will take. For this tutorial, I've decided on a forest at night with a moonlit sky or a starry sky. The next series of photographs are pictures I found on the internet. They will help me to determine exactly what I want to do with my level. I've decided that I will base my level off Forest at Night by Emily E. Now, the reason for this is because it has great potential to become a very beautiful level. There's only a few things I really want from this level. I want it to be a glass forest with maybe some puzzles or platforming challenges. I'd like it to be simple but visually pleasing, and I really want to enjoy the level when it's done. Try to make a note of the last part. I really want to enjoy the level. And this item should really be on every game plan that anyone intends to use in making a little big planet level. This particular part requires that you actually play the level. The final part, and this is kind of a biggie, you improve the level if it doesn't work. You see this little cycle going on? This is kind of the way your level should be created. You start with enjoying the level, you play the level, then you improve the level if it does not work. I really cannot tell you how many times I have seen this very simple concept violated and have witnessed some of the worst levels known to man. Like this one. You see this little gem? This is the entire level. It's a banana on fire with 11 eyeballs. You can check the count if you want. I really don't care. I did not want to put it every little detail on this level. Not that there was much to talk about it. It's just one flaming banana that looks at you the entire time you pass either in front of it or behind it. Only someone off a very strong medication and that has somehow lost that very strong medication would ever conceive a level that is purely this simple, stupid, and unnecessary, then publish it! <sighs> I'm okay. Now comes my personal favorite part of this entire tutorial, the construction and experimentation of your level. Start by gathering some materials and objects and putting them in your level to see what the thermometer does and to find out how much room you have for improvement in your level. Create some theme items and even characters if you want to add them to your level. Make a section of your environment. Start adding some theme items, maybe even a character to find out what it looks like. Take a moment away from creating and find out how your level plays out. So go in, find out what it feels like when you play it in play mode. After that, decide if you want to make any changes to your level. After all, flexibility is best served at this time. And for the last part, and yes, I am serious about this, lather, rinse, repeat as needed. That means you gotta go through your level and do this process over and over again till you're satisfied with it. And enjoy what goes on in your level. If you really begin to hate it, don't bother with it. Get away from it for a while, or even change a bunch of the things you've done. The materials I've chosen above and objects I've chosen are specifically the most necessary items I need. Of course, there also are some optional items I can add. Here are the optional materials. I'm probably going to keep them in mind, but may not use them, only because they're not necessarily required to make my level look that good. And the more materials you add, the less space you have on your thermometer to add new things. I decided to show you a minor step-by-step -step on how I'm going to make some of the items for this level. Some of these items I have added in other levels, so they may look familiar. This bee will be the theme character I'll have at the start of my level. I won't show you how I made him, only because this one's really complicated. This first page is the first thick layer of grass material used for platforms. Here is the first and second thick layers, both using grass. Here we have all three thick layers, all made of grass, and every platform is present. For the background, I could use one of the standard backgrounds, but for this one, I'm going to show you the background concept art that I used to create this level from. Now, you can do this yourself by having the last thin layer be glass and then stick the sticker on in the back, if that's what you want to do. Since the trees are the largest items, I decided to put them in first. Now, I'm putting them in the lower platforms 
because the upper platforms I am reserving for the stars. Now I am sticking them to the second and third thickest layer so I don't have to use any dark matter and since I made them completely thin it should work just fine. It also won't keep the player from getting uh, an issue when they platform around having thick layers around that they could accidentally you know, jump on. As you can see the stars are scattered about and have different sizes. This helps give the illusion of depth. The purple plants fit in so well with the thinner platforms I decided to add them there. It also helps with the size and scale of this particular part of the level to help match it with the trees to add a bit of a blending effect. Adding the grass in this way helps in fill in little details between the trees and the ends of the platforms. It can also be used as a segue to the flowers I will be adding soon. Putting the bee and the flowers in between the tree and the grass helps to keep every bit of detail within visual range of the sack person as they're platforming through the level. I didn't add any flowers next to the purple plants because they would kind of stick out in an odd way and I didn't want to have it happen like that. And I didn't have any grass or flowers at the top because I didn't feel that it was necessary with all the stars. The end is in sight now. It's time for finishing touches and important reminders. Decide where your scoreable should go or if you want to have any at all. Decide if you have the right number of checkpoints and of the right type. Then check to see if you need a closed level post. Double check your scoreboard, mainly its prizes and its location. Check your prize bubbles to make sure that you don't have two prize bubbles of the same prize. And check the keys, if any, that you put in your level. As you can see for this level, I decided on quite a few score bubbles because people really do enjoy them quite a bit when they can see their name on the scoreboard and find out how good they really are. Note that I have added two checkpoints to this part of the level. I really don't want people to get frustrated if they fall down and have to restart at a certain point. I could have added some poison gas for a little extra trouble getting through this, but I decided not to for the purposes of this tutorial. For this part, add a good name for your level and a great description so people can find it if they do a tag search. Add an appropriate icon that stands out among others so that you can be easily found as you're competing for plays. Replay your level to double check your work. You don't want to publish it and realize you missed something very critical. Publish your level near your photo. That way people don't have to search around for it. And tell your friends so that they can give you advice or reasonable comments about your level. Plus, it'll be a good way of getting early hearts on your levels. Here is the title, icon, and description I have chosen for this particular level. Note that I'm using the concept art as the icon because it best describes my level, and it's not going to be easy to find a level that has an icon that looks like that. Now time for a little challenge. I'm going to really be making this level, and I'm going to publish it out there. I'd like you guys to try it too. I want to see what you guys can come up with of your own imagination. See if you can make a level better than mine. See if you can make one in a little different than mine. I just want to see what you guys can do with the same starting point. The same concept art. The same idea. And you've got a notion of how I'm going to be constructing this level and what things I will be adding. So let's see what you can bring to the table. I'll be looking a little big planet after a while, and you can look for my level too. You know that it'll be under Phantasm Dusk, so let's see what comes out of this little challenge. Have fun, and have a great day.